Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Rock. Another episode, another new location, two new haircuts, joined by Daniel Woods as always. Daniel, how are you doing today, mate? I am doing fantastic. Episode five, and we are excited. Hello everyone, welcome back to Keys to the Rock. Uh, ben Rigo joined by Daniel Woods. Two new haircuts, new location, new topics. Daniel, good to see you as always, my friend. How are you doing today? I am fantastic. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. You're answering your own question. Yeah. Good to see you, Daniel. So um, last time, obviously, we were joined by none other than... Damien Pitcher, CG Insurance. It's good like that. And um, he really shared a lot of valuable insight on all things insurance. So if you haven't had the opportunity already, make sure you circle back to our episode four and give that a listen to wherever you get your podcast. And especially now that we're upcoming, you know, getting into the hurricane season, perhaps, hopefully not, but very valuable content there, guys, for everything that you might want to know. So thank you again to Damien. Yeah, and, shout out um, Damien. Great yeah, guy. And absolutely. actually, speaking of great guys, we have a fantastic guy on today. Yeah. Uh, Keeps getting better. Keeps getting better. Yeah. yeah. I think we're just... Yeah. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> uh, anyway, we just keep one up in ourselves with guests. And uh, today we actually have uh, RICS quanti quantity Ricks. survey. Ricks. Yeah. All right. That's something I'm very familiar with. I'm in the works right now trying to get mine. So I look up to this guy a little bit. Don't tell him I said that. But anyway, president and owner of Grey Main Contractors uh, is going to be joining us today. And he's going to talk about basically. I mean, Alex Takuto is Alex. Alex Takuto. Big leader. Uh, big leader. And uh, we basically put it out to the public on our social medias mm. uh, at Rigo Barmy at the Daniel J or some, whatever it is. The Daniel J Woods, not to be uh, confused with Daniel J Woods, the okay. blue tick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we asked people, what would they like to know about the construction industry? What would they like to know from a construction professional? And we got tons and tons of questions. Yeah. In. And basically, we've got the easy job where we're basically just spitting off some of these questions and we're just going to get into it. And Alex is going to provide as much information as he can and i'm excited to really have him on i'm yeah. I, I think this might be a longer than usual episode because it's yeah. a lot of information that we're going to squeeze in and we probably won't even get through all the questions that i um, mean you know, we probably would want to ask yeah, him no, so 100%. um definitely anyway, obviously well, well let's, for, let's, switch, let's switch gears i'm sorry my bad ben. well i that's want to kind of segue into where we are well that's okay go for it where are we ben so we are now at Azora, guys, and everyone's been super aware of what Azora is all about. Azora, they've been doing multiple new phases. I think surprising to many is just what the real estate industry has been doing over recent years. And uh, the popularity of Azora has just been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. You really can't even buy them. You know, people who have been trying to buy in certain, um, you know, units and everything, they're all gone. And now they even have a new phase that's, uh, you know, just starting construction. And then now an, an even newer phase that uh, they're going to be doing and they are um, further out to the and West. Busy. Yeah. Booked so and busy. You great see the for Bermuda. As you come in. Yeah. And um, it's at the old, what is it, Surfside location? I believe it used to yeah. be Surfside location. Yeah. And I mean, it's all standing. You see, we're out here on the South Shore. It's beautiful. It's pageant. It's fantastic. And Sells itself. I think we're in Warwick, but yeah. We are. Club so yeah. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Apologies. Anyway. Apologies. And so, Ben, I know you really wanted to talk about some, I mean, it was like a study or something that you had someone do yeah. a project. Yeah. So, right? Hannah Deacon at um, Riga Sotheby's International Realty, she was a wonderful intern for us for the summer. And she put out a survey to over 100 Bermudians. Um, and she's Survey Monkey. Many of you know of that um, that um, survey uh engine and um yeah it was fantastic the feedback she got so she was reaching out to millennials yeah. who are um what's a millennial well actually there's it's there's a, a lot of discrepancy about what a millennial is there's different segments of millennials and yeah. stuff now but roughly kind of 25 it could be said to be lower to maybe 40 
yeah. roughly. Yeah. And um, that... Yeah, you could say like a year. It's the years he was born. Like, yeah, I'm exactly. Say like, you know, he was born from 82 to... Yep. Or I, I might be off. 82 to 93 or whatever. But the this portion is. of the population is actually the busiest in the real estate industry today. So um, around the world, it's the biggest transfer of wealth that's going to be happening for you know, grandfathers and, and grandparents and, and parents, obviously. And um, for what the this segment is going to be, uh, you know, further being more influential in the industry. So... She did an amazing survey, and um, I would love to just share some of those stats. Uh, so stat guy, stat guy, stat guy. Good toss. Thanks, mate. Ooh, got it. One uh, take. One, one take, take wonders. One take. Okay. So, so just to go through some of these millennial stats, guys. So, twenty nine percent of millennials said that they were not familiar with the home buying process. Hmm. They didn't watch Keys of the Rock. Uh, Number you two, it. I was. <laughs> <laughs> 10% of people, so they already felt confident of uh, about the professional advice provided to them um, in a real estate transaction. Yet, 79% of those people said they would still be open to learning more. I wish there was a podcast that could just like really like, you know, fill that void. Yeah, I know. Well, this was a recent survey. So anyway, it's a good, a good <laughs> plug for that. Number four, 85% of uh, millennials said that they had consulted with a real estate agent at some point. However, 64% said that they would only, uh, sorry, they would use or recommend that agent again. So Interest. more than 50%, but honestly, you know, it probably should be more. These are, again, all Bermudian stats. Um, 100% they would cons- uh, said that they would consider buying a home using a real estate agent, which is um, a good stat for 100 people. So 100 out of 100, um, which is an interesting one. Um, <laughs> Number No, I mean, I've had a friend who bought a place directly, so that's just an interesting take. Mm-hmm. I guess they know that typically the seller pays the commission, so that's good yeah. to know. Uh, number seven, 86% of millennials start uh, viewing properties online. Surprising. I would say that should have, maybe I would have thought 100% or close to that, so yeah. 86%. And last point, 43% say they browse real estate monthly. Um, now, a lot of these people are younger, yeah. um, and so maybe they're just checking out social media and stuff from time to time. But those are really impactful numbers. And I think that's a, a massive part of our audience as well. No, Stack guy, by the way. 100%. Stack guy, thanks. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to also thank Ben for adding the first scripted portion of our podcast. Yeah. Um, you know, he was doing so great just being sort of off the cuff. And I yeah. appreciate you just reading off of a list. That's well, great. Anywho, um, so Ben. Thanks to what Scholast- are some of the things- Scholastic Kids for the reading aspect. Yeah. So what are some of the things that... Uh, I guess your advice would be to this millennial, the millennial market that is obviously actively shopping in the real estate industry in Bermuda. What's some things that you might sort of get say is uh, pro tips? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the, the urgency or the timing of the individual or the couple or whatever it might be for when they're looking to buy. I mean, it's really, really, really important as we've kind of you know, hammered on for many episodes to talk to an agent, someone who you know will you know be working in your corner for what mm-hmm. you're what you're looking for. But your definitely person, yeah. in in Bermuda, it's a small market. You're going to have to make some compromises, and typically, which definitely leads into what we're talking about today, you're going to more than likely be open or needing to do some construction to kind of um, get the house point. to what you yeah, want to do. Point, and yeah. what I'm finding is that millennials are far more open to that, and they watch a lot of HGTV and whatever, and um, they have a lot of ideas. Maybe not the um, the understanding of how realistic some of those ideas might be when you see mm. what people can they send people yeah. on a cruise they come back to a new house on these on these yeah, shows yeah, yeah. it's crazy after a weekend but in Bermuda it's a longer process but uh, there's definitely the appetite of millennials in Bermuda to, to be open to construction no 100% well I think I mean you summed it up and I think we've actually just did a great intro for our guest mm-hmm. so I think without further ado we're not going to keep it too long because Alex has got a bunch of great points that he wants yeah. to delve into um, I think Basically, let's welcome Alex. Let's get Alex on. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, and we are back. We are here with Alex DeCudo from Gray Man. Um, And we're going to jump right into it because we had got a lot of interest, a lot of questions from everyone on social media, the the Instagrams, the Facebooks, and the Twitters. And what we're going to do is just kick it off. You just tell us about yourself and what do you do? Who's Alex DeCudo? Sure. Uh, my name is Alex Takuto. I'm president and owner of Gray Main Contracting. It's a construction company, and yeah. we do commercial and residential construction in Bermuda. Uh, we do uh, lots of interesting projects, like uh, the beautiful Azura that we're at today. We're, we're the primary contractor on the on the property. Uh, we also do uh, high end re- high end residential construction work, uh, including a house at the bottom of Burnt House Hill, which you might be familiar with. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I've been in charge of Gray Main for, uh, about 15 years now. 15 years? Um, Jeez. yeah, I, uh, actually started from the bottom. 
uh, now you're here. W- worked worked as a li- and now I'm here. I've arrived <laughs> on the Keys to the Rock yep. podcast. This is the pinnacle. This is uh, the pinnacle right exactly. here. It's all downhill after this. But, um, <laughs> well, thank you, Alex, for joining us. And um, you know, certainly, Grayman has a, a massive name in the industry. And obviously, real estate wise, everything's been crazy lately. Mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the construction industry as a whole? It seems like you can't drive for five minutes without seeing someone with a, a construction sign outside doing some sort of improvements. Yeah. Uh, you know, high level, uh, what you say all the time, it's hot uh, yeah. at the moment. Um, but in terms of detail, it's, it's difficult because nobody's really watching uh, construction like they do with real estate. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you can go to the registry general and see every transaction. Mm. There's no, no one really watching it like that. Uh, the Department of Statistics does uh, produce a quarterly bulletin that looks at construction levels. And uh, the last bulletin was the end of 2020. And that uh, quarter was the uh, biggest quarter in the previous eight quarters. Wow. Uh, so that's a sign that things are definitely trending up. And, and if we look at uh, planning applications as well, uh, 2021, uh, the volume of planning applications per month is 30% higher than all of 2020 and still 30% higher than all of 2019. Jeez. Wow. Um, so that just goes to show you, uh, you know, in a couple of metrics, that construction work is really uh, taking off. And, and just anecdotally, I talk with uh, suppliers and architects and subcontractors yeah. and everyone is really flat out at the moment. Just everyone um, in all related industries just going, oh, sorry about that. Everyone in all related industries is just going busy, busy, busy right now. Yeah, workloads going well into next year. Okay, okay. And sure. so so what type of effect does that have, I guess, on the price per square foot? Because that's one of the things that people see. And there's like, uh, you know, the cost of lumber is increased by, I mean, you'll know better than me, but the number that I've heard is 300%. And, uh, you know, supply chain issues and whatnot, you know, so uh, it's getting more expensive. But at the same time, is that just based off of the demand or could you, you know, re- go into that a little bit? Yeah, sure. The, you know, there's there's local demand, which is driving uh, uh, our supply side or demand side economics in Bermuda. But there's the whole other sort of COVID situation that, I, you know, I yeah. think we've all exhausted pretty much uh, that's happening in the in the U.S. And, and everywhere else that is impacting contractors ability yeah. to secure materials um and and that's an ever-changing fluid situation yeah. uh various suppliers are talking about different uh increases happening all the time and and you get notices of them the the thing about construction projects is that the uh the transaction is is sort of one uh you know a contractor agrees to a price really early yeah. and so uh, some of that risk is carried by the contractor of price mm. increases. Yeah. Um, but what are we going to see in the next sort of six to 12 months in terms of uh, contractor pricing? They're going to have to start incorporating some of those increases yeah. into their new quotes mm. uh, as they receive and, and absorb uh, some of the uh, stuff that they've already had to take on board. Um, so, yeah, I, I do anticipate we're going to see an increase in, in pricing in the near future. And, and what would you I mean, I know it's uh, for a ballpark figure, I guess, for something residential. What would you consider is, I guess, the cost? for a price per square foot, the range that you would suggest right now for, sure. let's say, residential new build? Sure. I want you to know that I hate that question. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, I, I yeah. bet you did. And that's, I, I'm, <laughs> Someone I'm on sure. our team asked me that question <laughs> within this area uh, the other day. So, yeah, it completely varies. You know, you no, no, and I, gold I get faucets that. or whatever. How long but, is yeah. a yeah. string? Yeah. Uh, it, it's a good question and one that I, too, get asked yeah. all the time. Um, but it, it's, it's a really difficult metric to, to do. And, and, yeah. and sort of so what variables. we may talk about in a bit is, is sort of how do contractors build up those prices? Because mm-hmm. the price per square foot is something that they and, and many people shoot from the hip on. It's kind of like a, yeah. this yeah. metric that you, you almost work backwards. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, my house cost a million bucks and it was 10,000 square feet. Therefore, the price is you know X dollars mm-hmm. per square foot. Uh, but contractors don't really price that way. Yeah. Um, so it's really difficult to just shoot from the hip. Uh, you know, but if I am going to shoot from the hip, uh, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're looking for at the anywhere for, for the, yeah. Uh, you know, anywhere between four to $700 a square foot yeah. at, at the moment, it, it depends on, on quality of finishes and whatnot. Exactly. And yeah. So many variables. Details. In, in so, that. so when you're looking, obviously, I mean, we've had a lot of questions and stuff and people reaching out and they're saying, you know, if I'm looking to renovate a house or build a house from scratch, do you guys do like site visits for free? You know, how do people kind of understand what their costs are going to be? Or um, and then also maybe talk about you know the um, the different uh, engineers and inspections that also might go into helping to price things out for a contractor. Sure. Uh, 
So when selecting a contractor, I think it's, uh, it'll be important to initially talk with your architect or, or project manager. And so that's going to be a, a person, you're going to spend three to six months with that person first mm -hmm. before you're really coming to someone like me yeah. to, to look at work and, and, and price the work. And they're going to spend a lot of time. I mean, the questions you're going to have of the contractor are going to be, uh, you know, how much, uh, how long, how long? Yeah. And, yeah. and how quickly uh, yeah. can you do it? Uh, yeah. But in order to answer those questions, uh, the contractor really wants you to define what. Yeah. Uh, so what is he building? Uh, you know, what exactly uh, to the nth degree is being specified on the yeah. drawings and plans? And so you'll spend a good amount of time with an architect or designer who I would expect would be on this com podcast in the future. So I won't steal any of their show. <laughs> steal their um, show. No, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Answer their question. Um, you, you really want to talk with them. Uh, they will also have uh, recommendations for contractors, people they've worked with on projects similar to yours because okay. they'll be different mm -hmm. horses for courses, I think, mm -hmm. depending on the kind of building that you're doing. And so you'll want to, uh, you know, really define what it is that you're going to do. Uh, you know, pick your windows, pick your, your appliances, pick mm -hmm. every, you know, finish, uh, uh, get engineers to design uh, structures and, and everything else. And that's going to bring you more certainty when you do approach a contractor mm -hmm. uh, with regards to time and cost and how mm -hmm. quick. Yeah. They'll be able to answer that question much more definitively if you've done the work first. Sure. Mm -hmm. Defining the scope. Okay. All right. All right. So that's interesting. You're answering the best thing about your answers right now. I'm not even going to lie. And it's sort of, I mean, we do this very unscripted, but we have a ballpark idea of the questions we want to ask. But you're answering like multiple questions in one yeah. go. Yeah. And so, so we're done. <laughs> <laughs> End of episode. No. So, um, I mean, you, 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 you touched on it earlier. So how does the contractor actually come up with the quote then per se? Yeah. Um, oh, good question. Uh, so my background is actually I'm a chartered quantity surveyor. Rex. Uh, a Rex chartered Royal quantity. Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. surveyors. Indeed, I'm familiar with indeed, that. Indeed, yes. Uh, familiar uh, with that. I qualified uh, about 15 years ago and have worked as a quantity surveyor uh, since I got back from, from college uh, mm -hmm. too, too many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, quantity surveyors will work for contractors. Uh, they'll also work as independent uh, service providers, so you could mm -hmm. hire a quantity surveyor mm -hmm. independently, but uh, many work for contractors, yep. and they basically produce bills of quantity uh, for projects. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I would sit down with uh, a set of plans and drawings and break it down down to every last brick mm -hmm. and, and yard of concrete <laughs> and piece yeah. of rebar yeah. and door. and Exciting and, stuff. Yeah. It's because uh, <laughs> literally right now, um, one of the reasons why my, my outfit is so mixed match is because I'm moving houses today, tomorrow, and through the weekend. And um, <laughs> had to get out the I excuse had, I, of well, why. You know, I'm going to talk about it a lot. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is, our house, so we went out to bid to five different contractors. I think it's important. You would probably recommend people to do the same. But the person that we chose was, and this wasn't the only reason. We have a great relationship with them anyway. But they were roughly about 50% of what the highest bid was. And funnily enough, the highest bid also had uh, quoted double the time. So our contractor... and I'd say he probably didn't want that job. May maybe not. <laughs> or maybe they're too busy. But yeah. how do they... I mean, it, it was just funny to, to think, you know, what are they actually how, building? The plans are, are pretty straightforward. So so, like, because you know, everyone's using different quantity surveyors and there's, I'm assuming, only a handful on the island. So how could that possibly be? Whew. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to unpack in there. Yeah. So, and, and I would uh, take you into the inner workings of, sure, of, sure. of what happens when contractors bid on, off, on off jobs. The camera. Cut, cut. <laughs> uh, but it can be difficult for contractors when, uh, you know, especially bidding on a project for someone as, as, uh, influential as yourself, Ooh. um, not <laughs> participating in a bid. So if you're invited, you're invited me to bid yeah. and, and I'm great, graciously yeah. accepting like, oh, wow, this yeah. is a great opportunity, but. I'm I booked up for the next year yeah. or two or something yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you know I don't I don't want to like say no thank you yeah. you know so uh, some contractors may decide okay well I, I'm pretty sure the you know other contractors will bid in sort of this region sure. I, I don't you know I don't yeah. want to insult him by not bidding but yes, uh, you yes, know yes. so I'll Makes put in sense. a bid but maybe he overshot Resources it Resources and, and crew uh, he, are you overstretched. know and yeah, maybe yeah, there's yeah. an error in his spreadsheet who yeah, knows yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it yeah. happens. We haven't spoken since. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all good. It's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult bidding definitely, definitely. Uh, sometimes. Yeah. And just a follow up to that. So I've heard people all the time and they're like, oh, gosh, you know, such and such uh, job. Even ours is about two months overdue, uh, you know, understanding with uh, COVID and everything, a lot of delays in materials and all sorts. But people are like, you know, 
it's gone over. It's going way over budget. I must say that ours, you know, our contract, it's not gone over budget. Obviously, there's contingencies involved, but um, yeah, it's a little bit delayed, but it's not costing us any more. So why, what is the situation when people always say, oh, it's gone way over budget? What's that, you know, how does that even happen if you have a contract in place? Or how yeah. does that get rectified? I yeah. guess, too, at the same yeah. time, right? You know, who's, who's liable for those, yep. that situation? Indeed. And, and I think the, the outcome of, of decisions made very early in the, in the project mm. bear fruit later. Yes. And, and so whether or not a job could possibly be over budget, mm. really, the, 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 that was settled many moons prior sure, uh, when, sure. the, when the project was designed and specified mm -hmm. and everything else, yeah. and the contracts were drawn up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then engaging with your architect, so I assume your designers probably stayed on board and, and kind of seen things through. Yeah. Uh, that's an important role to play, mm -hmm. especially if you're not a sophisticated uh, uh, construction person. Mm -hmm. You need to have somebody sort of working yeah. on your behalf yeah. Yeah. while through the project, not just, just I've designed my, my, my project and therefore you know, let's hand it to the contractor and then off you go. Yeah. Uh, in theory, like you say, there should be no overruns. Yeah. You know, unless there's unforeseen conditions, uh, like, uh, I don't know, there's a World War II bomb underneath your house yeah, or something. Exactly. And you dig a hole yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, what's that? Dude? So effectively, so, if it's delayed and you have those good contracts in place, comes the, the margins for the yeah. contractor are just going to be... It, it's small. only... It's only if you change something, exactly, if yeah. you wi yeah. willingly change something, Sorry, oh, I want to add another bedroom. Go this way instead of this yeah. way and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that comes down to, I mean, that comes down to, yeah, having a clear thought out process of what you want to yeah. accomplish in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then what you was iterating earlier was sort of the project, ma whoever's project managing in a sense, yep. I guess. Um, and then, so I guess switching gears now, um, because I know Ben gets it a lot and uh, it's one of the questions that I'm asked, um, you know, because I have experience sort of doing valuations and stuff like that. And so I guess one of the things that we look at is what's one of the best, what's one of the easiest ways in a sense to, for minimum cost, to really upgrade your property or your home? Sure. Uh, and I'm thinking of, a, you know, just a regular, cot say a cottage or just a regular house. Yeah. Um, I, I have a motto that I repeat all the time and it's uh, I don't pick it, I just stick it. <laughs> and so I try to keep my dog out you can of. You apply that. Of, uh, <laughs> uh, I try to not get too much involved in uh, uh, what I would call aesthetic improvements. Mm, but yeah. there's certainly opportunities that homeowners could do to increase the value in their home yeah. from a construction point of view, um, and and that's going to center around things that people appreciate more. And, and Ben's probably got more opinions on this than, than I do. But obviously, everyone loves to uh, redo their kitchen, yeah, uh, kitchens you know, and bathrooms. But those are like probably the also the most expensive the, places. Indeed, you know? indeed, because you've got all sorts of trades in there: mechanical, electrical, plumbing. Yep. Uh, obviously carpentry yeah. and, and cabinetry and finishes and so and all that, uh, yeah. where are you going to get the most bang for your buck it's going to be around those areas but then there's uh, other aspects of the structure like doors and windows um, you know people notice and, and will come in handy when there's things like storms happening mm -hmm. and, and you know uh, those are the kinds of things that you'd want to improve on your property. Interesting, so, interesting. You know, as I'm just staring off on the, you know, the coastline here at Azora, um, you know, it's making me think, obviously there's going to be new ways of construction in the future. Things are always changing. You know, back in the day it was Bermuda stone, now concrete block. I know a lot of construction methods, even one project in Bermuda, they were importing big slabs of poured concrete. Yeah. Um, which was yeah, yeah, I didn't want to say, it, but yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, you know, places like that, I think I've heard better for insulation. I mean, is, is there anything else that's looking to the future in Bermuda yeah, that sure. we're going to, going to do? Um, yeah. Uh, and one thing about Bermudians, we don't like change very much, yeah. uh, but really? we've got a good thing. I think, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we build pretty well and, yeah. and our structures do hold the test of time. And, um, one of the things, though, is um, concrete block in particular uh, is a really poor insulator. Mm. Uh, it's got a R values is the kind of uh, term we use to uh, determine how much insulation value it has. And a concrete Google block has Google, an R value Google of <laughs> one, uh, which is like the, the wow. zero is no insulation value. So one and, and then like, a, 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 you know, a decent walls, you know, in Canada or, or, or the States, you'd want an R value of around 20 or 30 for your for your sure. exterior walls so, so we're not doing great we're not doing great from that and <laughs> that's why you but know insulation in, in, i mean it's obviously it doesn't get too cold no exactly yeah. but you know in january it's incredibly it's, hot right now i 50, keep the blazer on just for the show but it's hot i wouldn't wear it, it normally. Is pretty sweaty yeah. but that's the only thing is like in january february <laughs> when it's like 55 outside yeah then inside it's like ugh, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah 61 damp, yeah you know sure. the dampness mm -hmm. yeah 
So we could do a better job on that. And there's actually a couple of products out there that um, there's a little bit of uptake on and a couple of the, uh, companies that are trying to take them off. Insulated concrete forms, uh, which is basically uh, they're polystyrene um, forms. They're like slabs of, mm -hmm. of really lightweight uh, insulation yeah. product uh, that come in like pre preset widths and you fill them with concrete. And they form a concrete structure with the formwork on either side, insulated, and you, you plaster, drywall the inside, plaster the outside. I've seen so stuff the, like that where they this, pour it in um, on yep. Grand Designs in the UK. So that's I, how they do it. Yeah. It's been yeah. it's been done here yep. in a few instances, sure, sure. Uh, but you got to be willing to to you know take that leap. Take sure. that leap. So uh, but different and new so product. Would, so would that essentially be a cheaper way of building moving forward? Not necessarily. Think, no, I think it's no going to be is cheaper, equal, more inexpensive. Probably, it, I would assume. I yeah, apologize. it'll I'll be equal, but estate. I think you would see it in uh, return in in like energy efficiency yeah. and, and life cycle yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. We had a great episode on energy efficiency, so if you haven't watched that yet, by all means, <laughs> with green light energy, it was a good episode. It was a good episode. Yeah. Alex watched it. I did, and then right after that, he was like, "Can I come on your show?" And he was like, "I'd love <laughs> yeah, to have you." Yeah, it's like, anywho, chill, chill out, switching mate. gears. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you said our structures are very sound. Um, so I guess that leads me to another question. Um, is it more advantageous to do a new build or would it uh, be best to go on an existing property? Now, I know that's a subjective question because obviously it depends on the quality. But, you know, um, just share your thoughts. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think the biggest factor in real estate is location. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ben would agree, I think. But, um, you know, I think if you find a great house uh, that has an existing structure on it, uh, you know, you can work wonders in construction. You can do just about anything. Yeah. New build, renovation, it, it kind of doesn't matter. So uh, the only factor I would say weighs it to new construction is that uh, there's just going to be unknowns associated with a renovation yeah. that, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to know really what's behind walls and yeah. under foundations. And, and so you, you'd be entering into that and a contractor too is going to look at a project that's a renovation and he's going to maybe factor in some unknown, mm -hmm. you know, costs in there. Um, so that risk element, you know, maybe tips it in, in favor of a new build, but, um, but really, uh, you know, anything is possible either way. Nice. And I would think to that, that often if someone buys a house, the seller isn't necessarily selling it. You know, the seller always thinks their house is worth this. Yeah. The buyer thinks it's worth this. The seller thinks the house, even if it needs renovation, it's, you know, a pretty good house and no one needs to knock it down or, or yeah. gut the whole thing. Yeah. So you're going to pay a little bit of a premium for that. And then, of course, it's going to be very expensive. A lot of unknowns and things that you might find as opposed to if you buy a piece of land, you know, just the cost per square foot, it'll be, I would think, because land prices aren't as strong at all, you know, it'd probably be more affordable to do it that way. But of course, in Bermuda, the scarcity of land, you can't really find that anyway. So probably better to do land, but yep. where can you find you said it? said a lot of nothing there, Ben. A lot uh, of hey, nothing. Play that back. That you just, very uh, important, Alex. Yeah. Buy land, they're not making any more of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so definitely. All right. So we are actually, I mean, so this doesn't lead us to our next question, but we're at a nice waterfront property right now. Um, so is there... I mean, there's obviously different approaches. Can you sort of delve into the different approach that you would take if you're dealing with a waterfront property versus an inland property? Uh, I, I'd say there's not much difference. Uh, you know, a lot of design considerations will come into it rather yeah. than construction. So, you know, where are you facing your property? Uh, how are you dealing with uh, uh sort of water encroachment obviously at azura you know we're, we're actually quite close to the south shore edge and we Are did we? a lot of uh <laughs> we did a lot of um foreshore work mm -hmm. and and a lot of concrete uh, yeah. w went in to to shore up the, the fight us yeah um the the short shoreline there so um those are factors that you, you'd have to consider depending on the property um but otherwise the the difference is is negligible between building shoreline no, versus nice. inshore and, and just a quick um you know opinion on differences of things so slate roof versus like you know um uh, uh skb and things like that you know people often ask me and i don't know they keep they keep you dry underneath but what's kind of preferable <laughs> or more affordable as well and what does yeah. skb stand for yeah. that's a good good all good do questions. you know are you just I, a rhetorical I, question I, what does it stand for dan I, uh, I don't know. I, I don't Google know. I just know it's a type of coding, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so sure. I was waiting for this. Nobody episode. knows. Nobody knows. It just <laughs> everyone just calls it SKB. I have some yeah. thoughts. Um, I have strong opinions on on this. Actually, okay. Um, sure I don't then. think there's any reason whatsoever that anybody should be building with a slate roof okay. today. Okay. Uh, absolutely no reason. Uh, it's like it would be like building a house out of Bermuda stone. Yeah. You know why would you do that? I did an extension out of slate. 
Ben, <laughs> Damn Ben's, it. Ben's, Ben's, <laughs> I was going to say, Ben, Ben's got the look on his face like he's building uh, a yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. Maybe. You can see it. There, That's there, why there. the construction was more affordable, perhaps. I, don't know. Well, I should have gone with the expensive guy. The, the price of slate really goes up and down as SKB goes up and down at the moment. Okay. Like, it used to just go up every year. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. SKB just is it's just a better product. It has better insulation value. Slate has no insulation value. Right. Uh, it doesn't crack or break up like um, SKB <laughs> or like it. Slate no, does. No, just um, and and uh, it's lighter and just improves the design of, of roofs. Yeah. Uh, all in all, it's it's definitely a better roof. I've spent a lot of time on the top of roofs after hurricanes, mm. uh, assessing damage and giving you know insurance quotes and yeah. everything like that. And I could count on one hand. I, I've been on hundreds of roofs, and I can count on one hand the number of SKB roofs I've had to uh, repair. Uh, and even in those cases, it was like a tree fell on the wow. building yeah, or something. Yeah. Really. They just don't experience the same failure rate as, as Slate and just overall a better product. The name is the th- names of the three founders of the product. So Jeez. the product was I actually developed. I would never figure that out. Wow. I would have never thought so It's that. like a law firm. It's uh, it kind of, yeah. Uh, it was developed many, many years ago. This is how new product, how long new products take to take in yeah, Bermuda. Be, yeah, you know? sure. So it was developed uh, probably 30, 40 years ago. Really? And wow. just really slowly uptake. And it's basically a, a cement board that goes on your roof members. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, polystyrene foam. So it's like a, a real... Um, there's dead soldiers over there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, polystyrene foam that that uh, goes glued on top of that and then a coating on top of that and has to be uh, what's called a potable coating so yeah. that when water goes on it, you can drink the water. Uh, and that sandwich uh, all goes together to make an SKB roof. The, the original names were, uh, I know one of them was Berland, uh, the B. You could just yeah. be um, saying this at this point. Yeah, Smith. And- the, K, the K was <laughs> Kaufman, I believe. <laughs> Uh, I don't know who the S was. I want to say f- it might be Sousa. We're going to Sousa. We're, we're gonna Sousa. Sousa. Okay. Ricky Sousa actually owns or has a piece of that. It, it, Ooh, it's something I'm not, okay. not really out. sure who the S we'll is. Maybe yeah, 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 maybe yeah. someone in the comments can tell us who the S yeah. was. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think, um, you know, well, actually, Alex did mention insurance. And just uh, another tidbit, I'm going to get in the habit of doing this. We had a great episode on insurance last episode. So if you're watching on YouTube, by all means circle back to that but i think at this point i think i i feel like i know a lot more than before this yeah I've, I've learned a lot of mistakes i've made with my construction <laughs> decisions but you, you should uh, have no, talked to alex before i know i know i know he was too busy building azora <laughs> yeah. but um but anyway no it's been a pleasure having you on and it's been uh, great to be on certainly if anyone has any questions on the construction industry you can reach out to alex we'll have his contact details somewhere here Email. reach out to us as well if you need to uh, be in touch with mm-hmm. him and uh Thank you for being on. I really appreciate Much it. Much appreciated. Cool. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> you like your- All right. So thank you so very much to Alex Takudo of Greymane. I thought that was phenomenal. You right. know, constructing such a massive part of every house that you see. A lot of information there. A lot of information. A lot of takeaways. A lot of key points. Yep. And just a lot of, you know, I feel like I'm ready to build a house. Consult. Well, I wouldn't get that far, you know, but I'm ready to consult. Keep, keep the bricks level, but ultimately, <laughs> um, you know, very informative stuff. And reach out to Alex. Um, you know, I think it's uh, it's something that's ever changing the construction industry. You know, Bermuda. We have our own methods. We have our own um, storms and everything that we have to do in, in terms of how we build. But um, yeah, really phenomenal, and they're definitely leaders in the industry. So thanks again to yeah, them. Much appreciated. And I think at this point, I think we're just going to jump right into our keys to the rock. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to sing um, this time, but the, yeah. Sorry. Key, yeah. Keys yeah. to the episode. Yeah. Yep. To I'm, the... Yeah. I'm, yep. Keys no, to the episode. Doing, okay. <laughs> keys to the episode. Uh, so I'm going to go first, actually. Sure. And my keys to the episode, because of the look on your face <laughs> when Alex said it, uh, is SKB over Slate. All right. Yeah. So I apologize to any Slate companies out there. <laughs> yeah. But SKB over Susa Slate. Susa Kaufman Bauer? Anyway, whatever, SKB though. SKB. Definitely Team SKB going forward. And your takeaway? What would your I I would say definitely in what is a very, very, very busy time, real estate-wise, construction-wise, to go out to multiple construction companies when you're looking to do something. Often people, you know, if they're looking to buy a house or what have you, they just bring one contractor for, you know, their their opinion on things. But that necessarily wouldn't be your best opportunity for, you know, getting the 
the best bid, the most timely situation, and the best partnership. So go out to multiple construction companies. Gray Main obviously is a fantastic one to go with, but um, but yeah, that's you know to your advantage to kind of survey the field and no, see uh, who's out there for you. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I think now we're at the point where we generally do uh, what do we do? Uh, uh, business, a business shout out. Business shout out. So um, the business shout out for today, I think it's just fitting because of where we're located mm -hmm. and. We're going to go get some cocktails, I believe, after this. Sure. Um, You're buying. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, we're going to give a business shout out to Vita at Azora. So That's why we're shouting them out, just yeah. because of the cocktails. Yeah. So, so anyway. I'm hoping that when they see this, that, uh, you know, they comp me. They understand the contract. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> they comp these drinks. And uh, no, but Vita, uh, it's obvious. It's it's honestly one of the, the best views on island. And they make some amazing cocktails up there. And it's a very nice, you know, just it's just a nice aura just around the and establishment. And so uh, I should yeah. say about Vita, you know, it's a little hidden gem and because a lot of people don't know about it. And unfortunately, in this kind of COVID climate, they've been a little bit delayed in getting some things off the docks yeah. and getting their equipment. But it's it is open though. to the public and it's outdoor. It's outdoors. It's open to the public. Um, and they have amazing cocktails, amazing service. Yeah. And um, they do food as well. So yeah. definitely look them up. They're on social media and everything. And a uh, big shout out to Keegan Sterling and his team. You know, they are they really represent Bermuda and um, the you know hospitality industry very well. All right. So let's get out of there. Let's get it up there to get some drinks. Um, like, share, subscribe, listen, comment, wherever you guys get your podcast from. This is Daniel Woods and Ben Rigo from Keys to the Rock. And thanks for joining us on episode five thanks for joining us on episode five <laughs>